Hey everybody, this is Alan Fine and I'm here with Soraya Al Alama, who is the head of North America for Dubai Tourism, and Chad Martin, who's the director for Northeastern United States for Israel Ministry of Tourism. And we are here all together in New York City, and this is Insider Travel Report. You just had a presentation, a joint presentation, your first one live, because the last one you had was, was a, a digital. What did it feel like? How was it? It was amazing. I mean, like I was saying with Chad, we've been working so closely together since we signed the Abraham Accords, and we're just excited to do more with each other next year. Well, what was that like when, when, the, when the Accords were signed? You didn't right away call each other, but how did that unfold? Actually, we did right away call each other. Uh, Literally, as soon as From the happened. very beginning, we were talking because I think we've known for a long time the potential, of not just of working together, but the synergies that we have, you know, and how we want to connect with the U.S. traveler. Wow. We saw that for a long time, even before the Accords. Leading up to it, we were just fingers crossed, hoping that things yeah. would come through. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about this evening and what you presented, and then we'll show them as much as we can. Who wants to start? So, um, we obviously, we spoke a little bit about the signing of the Abraham Accord and what we plan on doing together, you know, positioning both of our destinations together in the U.S. Um, but I also discussed COVID updates, as well as some of the new things that are happening in, in Dubai, of course, with the World's Fair starting on the 1st of October of this year, going all the way till the 31st of March next year. Well, so let's talk about that since, um, well, we have unfortunate news from Israel. We can't go there right now, but we can go there. So let's talk about your protocols in the, for the moment. What are they? So um, to enter Dubai, all you need is a negative PCR test valid 72 hours from the time of departure. Um, in order to go to the World's Fair, you either need the negative PCR test for 72 hours from time of departure or proof of vaccination. That's all you need. Right. And right now in Israel, we're, we are watching and being cautious. You want to speak to that? Yeah, well, I think we, we know what it looks like when tourism does return to Israel. You know, we had, unfortunately, a short period when people were able to come back into the country, but they all had their third shot. They had a PCR 72 hours prior, PCR upon landing, and then they got a green pass and were free to go like every Israeli. We know what that looks like. We think of this as one step back before the next two steps forward. We're no longer in that stage anymore where it's two steps back, one step forward, and we're constantly just uh, not knowing when everything's going to open. When things open, that's probably what it'll look like. We've just got a delay, and I think that's because of Omicron. People understand that. Let's get back to the presentations this evening. So we spoke about everything that's happening in Dubai, from obviously from a destination standpoint, um, all of the amazing experiences, new openings like Ain Dubai, and of course the World's Fair Expo 2020 Dubai which started on the 1st of October this year and goes all the way till the 31st of March right. next year right, right. and then uh, for Israel what do we talk about well for one it's you know I, I can't emphasize enough that this is a friendship this isn't just peace like oh you're okay you know, this is like a, a real embrace of two societies. Israelis will be touring in Dubai, and Emiratis will be coming to Israel to tour as well. That is a real change in, in the entire nature, not just for Israel and Dubai, but our region. You know, for so many times, people will say Middle East, and it's like this far corner of yeah. the universe that's so far away. You know, when you say the word Mediterranean, know that half of the destinations on the Mediterranean are in the Middle East. Okay, yeah. and Dubai, of course, our friends across the Gulf, um, you know, in, in the Red and so on and so forth so um, it's not that far away and we're not so you don't have to be so afraid when you come we're warm welcoming places that are now really friendly with each other you don't have to worry about your passport stamps about any of these other things that people used to ask us about those were those times when we would just kind of cringe and be like gosh you know we'd say well we don't stamp your passport that doesn't reassure people no. you know what reassures people is something like this where you can see us standing together saying please come to our region yeah. please you know please come and see the amazing things that we have since people are coming and guests are coming to your country uh, have you what what kind of uptick have you seen I mean obvious and what countries are the ones that are coming most so um, actually I'm happy to say that the US has been doing really well for us we managed to move from the seventh largest source market to the fourth and our search coming from the US is amazing it's actually the number two in terms of search volume after India we're 155 percent above pre-pandemic levels so there's a huge appetite for Dubai and of course Israel, you know, putting us both together, we make a great dual destination. Now, we always know that you're building, you're building, but now you've got this time out and Israel will keep uh, bettering itself. What's new in Israel that our travel advisors should know? Um, well, for one, you know, the international brands, the ones that their clients know and that they, of course, know, 
Uh, there's twofold. One is on the lift side, in that every U.S. legacy carrier now flies nonstop to Israel yeah. from at least at least two U.S. gateways. Yeah, Emirates and Fly Dubai also fly to Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, no, well, now that's between Israel and, and, and yeah. Dubai. For us, it's more about the U.S. airlift. Um, the U.S. airlift is unlike any other time in our history. Before the pandemic started, American Airlines had zero flights to Israel. We're looking at exiting the pandemic with three nonstop gateways on American Airlines. So the access to Israel is totally different than it was before. And likewise, it's from U.S. carriers. So that kind of trust you have in the points programs, the loyalty programs, additionally, the familiarity really does help us. Of course, our, our legacy carrier ourselves is, is El Al, our flag carrier. And they, too, are here and, and flying nonstop from multiple gateways. I can't list all of them because we'll actually be here quite a while. We, we, I'm having trouble so filling great. the list. Yeah, so um, that's one side. The other side, I would say, is uh, on, the, on the land side. Six Senses has opened in the Negev Desert, and we also have a Kempinski that's opening in Tel Aviv. They're building an a, uh, intercontinental in Jerusalem. So major international brands, because Israel has been fully normalized in tourism, we are a major force in tourism, yeah. and we're getting the major investment as well. And uh, you guys, as I said, you're always building. What's the latest new thing? The latest new thing in Dubai is Ain Dubai. So it's the largest Ferris wheel in the world. So it opened in October. It's amazing. Um, and then hopefully the Museum of the Future will open up in the next few months. So sustainability is uh, uh, in the forefront in both your, both your countries. Uh, let's talk about yours first. I really wanted to highlight the World's Fair, so Expo 2020 Dubai. It's one of the most sustainable events in the world. Uh, the theme is connecting minds, creating the future. We have three districts, sustainability, opportunity, and mobility. Of course, where we focus on all of the most you know, major causes and, and issues that are happening around the world. Um, some of the pavilions, like the UAE pavilion, is shaped after a falcon and its wings. And so during the day, it basically just generates you know, electricity on its own from renewable energy. So at night, it opens up its wings, and it, it's basically self-sufficient. Wow. wow, that's exciting. OK, and, and now Israel. Well, Israel is more general. I mean, we aren't we don't necessarily have a big event like Expo. But what I think a lot of people miss is what is sustainability? Well, for one, from the UNWTO, a lot of that is uh, historical sites, helping local communities. These are these are tenants of Israeli tourism that we have held dear for many, many generations. Uh, Israel has 70 national parks. We have over 200 nature reserves. We're the size of New Jersey. So just think about every every few paces you go in New Jersey, there's a nature reserve. That's Israel. That's preservation. And that's what we're doing. Then from a, a, a sense of sustainability, I think that there's a, sort of a disconnect here. There's the travel sustainability, which is how you become a, a sustainable destination, which we inherently are. We sustain our, our historic destinations very well. And then there's the sustainable traveler, which is more environmental. And on that, Israel has switched from coal almost entirely to natural gas. We have the largest solar uh, solar generator in the world. Uh, we, uh, we recycle over 90% of our water. We're the only country in the world even close to that. The next closest to Spain with around 30 to 40%. Uh, we're about 8% on solar. We're looking to, for our 2030 goals to get up to 20%. The only country that is up to 8% like we are is Honduras. So Israel is a leader in sustainable energy. We're trying our best in sustainable living. Uh, the only country, again, when it comes to water sustainability, if places like California had Israel's water system, they wouldn't have a water crisis. That is how how very efficient Israel's sustainability is. Israel had to be. <laughs> it almost was it like was an imperative. It was definitely out of necessity, yeah. Yeah. but it is a fact and truth regardless. Right, right. Well, you both have <laughs> amazing countries, and it's wonderful that you guys are working together. I'm sure that that will add prosperity to you both, uh, and, and I, I wish you both the best. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alan. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.